One of my favorite internet sleuths to watch is CoffeeZilla. He does his entire channel, every video from within what he calls the $10 million studio. But in reality, he's just sitting in the corner of probably a pretty small room in front of a green screen. In newer videos, it's two green screens. He makes a clever use of changing the angle to drive home the effect that he's sitting in this 3D rendered studio. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do this effect in Final Cut Pro, how to use a green screen. Okay, so here we are in the world's most boring room. Terrible walls, it's small, everything's a hard surface, so it's gonna be a little echoey. But I wanna make this into a place where I can just be anywhere. I can be coming to you from the beach or from my own $10 million studio. Step one, acquire green screen. There are a bunch of fairly cheap options on Amazon that come with lights and stands and all that. I actually got mine from this big convention we were doing some lighting work for. They had all this felt carpet underlayment that they were just gonna be throwing away after the show. So I took like 50 feet of it home with me. I'm gonna go chop that up and I think I'm just gonna staple it to the walls in here if that holds up. And if this was a permanent set, you could just paint the walls green. Let me go chop this up and stick it up on the wall behind me. Then I'll get a desk set up and everything so I don't gotta hold this microphone. And actually I'm gonna do two walls so that I can have the two camera angles just like CoffeeZilla does on his. Q montage. Great. So now the wall behind me is green. Next up is lighting. Importantly, you need to light up this wall separately from lighting yourself. You want the background color to be really even, so you don't want shadows of you obstructing the even color of the background. And you want the fabric on the wall to not have very many visible creases. You can iron it or steam it, or if it's a flexible fabric, unlike this carpet, you can stretch it tight and then staple it to the wall that way. If you do have stark shadows, those shadows can peek through the effect afterwards. Although Final Cut is getting really good at removing everything love living in the future. With a single wall, you can just put a light on either side of the back wall and then situate yourself in between those two lights and everything's perfect and wonderful. And in fact, you don't even have to have the green screen cover your whole shot. Your green screen just has to cover your whole body. You'll be able to crop the edges of this shot out later in post. Sometimes when you see behind the scenes footage stuff of Hollywood movies, they're just carrying around a little circle behind someone's body where they are like outside or whatever. It looks kind of funny. But since I've gone and made a corner green screen in the office in there, I have to get a little more clever with the lighting. However you do it, make sure the lighting is as even as possible on the green screen. So this key light has a grid on the front of it. What that does is make it so the light can only go in one direction. It shoots me and then it goes past me and hits this wall that's not being recorded. That way I'm not casting a shadow on the wall behind me. This light sort of just comes from an angle and doesn't make a shadow behind me because a shadow would screw up the key. So since my desk is gonna be here and my key light is over here, my second camera goes opposite my key light over there. It's typical during interviews and really most shots in like Hollywood movies to shoot from the side that's not being lit. So if my key light's over here, camera goes over here. Second bonus from that is that this camera is not gonna see any shadows over there behind me either, since the lights are coming from this way. And then these other lights are behind me. I mean, I can reach back and make a shadow, but the lights are behind me just throwing light onto the green wall and not me. I also wanna point out that using warm light doesn't work as well. I actually just figured that out today. I had this whole wall lit at 3,500K. I'm showing the footage now. I have these bi-colored lights, but with the warm colored lights, Final Cut Pro is having a way harder time keying out the background. I'm guessing because there's kind of a lot of yellow in skin tone and there's also yellow in warm green light uh, and so there was just some confusion with the software. If your lights are bi-colored, use the daylight color or if your lights are daylight colored, don't worry about that whole spiel. Motion blur can be problematic. It's extremely hard for the software to take green out of a moving blurry thing. I think this camera set at a lower frame rate so if I shake my hand it should be blurry. So since the color of my arm will sort of be mixed with the color of the wall behind it, you'll still be able to see some green between my fingers and my waving hand. To fix this, use a higher shutter speed. This camera's on a higher shutter speed and there's less motion blur so there should be less problem getting the key out. Normally at 24 frames per second you'd shoot at 1 over 50 shutter speed. I have this camera set at 1 over 80 shutter speed to fix any motion blur problems. And anyway, this is a talking head video. It's not like I'm shooting a fight scene. So now that this is all set up, it's time to leave this small, boring green room behind. I thought it'd be pretty fun to have one of those AI art generator things make my backgrounds. So I'm going into mid journey and I'm typing cyberpunk workshop area realistic. And I'll just see what it gives me. First, I'm just gonna go through the normal process of replacing this green screen with whatever picture or video you want and then making adjustments to it. And then I'll go into how to do this with a multicam clip, which is just a little bit more set up. One of the problems you can run into with green screening is, like I said, for the keying to work perfectly, you need the green screen to be really bright. But that means that the green screen itself is gonna be reflecting green light. And if you're sitting too close to the green wall, some of that green light is gonna reflect back onto you. The easiest and the best way to fix that is just to not be very close to the green wall, like you're seeing here in the warehouse. But 
If the whole reason you're using a green screen is to make a small space look like a big space, like this space in here, you may have no choice but to sit really close to the wall. In that case, we can fix it in the software, and I'll get to that in a minute. First, drag your video clip down into the timeline, and just find a good spot where you're looking at the camera because you haven't edited anything yet. Next, for your backdrop, and I did a bunch, so we're just gonna like, I don't know, pick one. How about this cyberpunky, cyberpunk workshop area realistic, is what I had the AI make there. Take your backdrop clip, drag it down next to your video clip, bring the video clip on top of it and then make your backdrop the whole length of the clip. Now, to do the key, it's actually super simple. We're gonna go to keying, we're gonna go to the keyer and just drag it on there. And for the most part, it's gonna nail it pretty much right away. You can see on the bottom left here, there's some artifacts happening. If that happens, go to the video inspector, click on sample color, and then just drag a box to where you know your green screen is. That'll refine the green screen. You can see that we got a problem with our laptop, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. Next, go down to your backdrop file. This can be a video file too. You're gonna go back over to the video inspector after you clicked on it and you can use this scale all thing to scale it up and then use these sliders to put yourself in that scene where you think you belong. The lighting looks a little different to me. So if you click on your video file and go to the color inspector, you can click on exposure and you can sort of mess with your exposure until you feel like you fit in the place a little better. Next, the way cameras work, if all that stuff is that far behind me, it's gonna be a little bit out of focus. Click on the backdrop, go over to your effects browser. Uh, if this isn't here, you can click this little icon. That's what makes that pop up. Go to blur and then drag a Gaussian blur onto the backdrop. That's obviously way too much. Just turn the amount down to whatever looks right. This looks like about, I don't know, F2. Unfortunately, you can see my laptop is a little sparkly. That takes a little more pre-planning than I can do in post because here's what it looks like. If we go to the keyer and turn the key off, my laptop is green because it's reflecting the green wall back there, which means that the keyer is keying it out. Now over to my armpit, you can see there's some sparkly bits on my armpit and it's kind of where the reflection from my t-shirt from the green wall, like I was talking about earlier, if I was sitting too close to the green wall. Go back into your keyer in the video inspector, scroll down to where it says color selection, and then on chroma roll off, if you scroll that up a little bit, that'll get rid of the sparkly bits on my armpit. It doesn't do enough to get rid of the sparkly laptop, unfortunately. But that's how simple it is to make a green screen work. So now I'm in that environment. If I want to replace that with this picture with a little art in the background, you can just drag it over the top of that, say replace with three time to fit. You will have to go back in and scale that up and choose where it sat and then add another blur back onto that. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so to do this in a way that looks believable, you're gonna want your two backgrounds from your two different angles to sort of match, but be different. And the closest thing I have to that that I already have prepared is this little, what did I call this? Cyberpunk workshop area. I have one that's kind of angled and I have one that's kind of straight on. With the key that we've already made, I'm just gonna replace that. That's straight on. It looks pretty nice, whatever. I want the floor visible just so camera angle sort of makes sense. Here's my B camera angle, and I'll use the backdrop that's like an angled version of that same view from the other one. Same thing, obviously, we're gonna go to the keying, we're gonna key this, and then we'll fix this angle. And then you can see I've got wall over there. I don't want that, obviously, so I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. There we go. In this case, I made a little bit of a mistake while filming and one of my lights is in the shot, but you can just go down to this masking tool, draw mask, drag that in, and then draw a mask around something that you don't want to be in that clip. Choose invert the mask, drag that into place, and then that light disappears. All right, so now we've got two scenes, but these were shot at the same time in the same place, and there's I want them to sync up so I can use them as different camera angles. Click on the video, hold down command, click on the backdrop, two finger click if you're using a trackpad, or right click and say new compound clip, B cam. Do the same thing with the other one. Click, select, right click, new compound clip, A cam. Over here in your events section, we have our A cam and our B cam. We're gonna right click on those and we're going to call this a new multi-cam clip. Make sure that use audio for synchronization is checked and hit okay. It should line these up perfectly. And now you have a multi-cam clip. So you can get rid of these in the timeline, pull your multi-cam clip down and then up above your preview, click view and go to angles. And now you have your two angles that are available. Maybe get rid of everything on the left so you have more space. So whichever clip has your main sound attached to it, or if you have a third one that has that is just your audio, if you record your audio separately, which I actually am right now, click on that clip that uses the main sound, then choose this icon here, which will just switch between the camera angles and it won't switch the sound. See how the green stays on the one that I chose for the one with sound. Then you can literally just play through your video and you can just switch camera angles like you're a news program on the fly 
and it makes editing way easier because you won't have to like go through every one of these cuts and change the background. The background's just baked in. If you forgot to edit something, you've already made your multicam clip, that's okay. In the timeline, you can double click on the multicam clip and it separates it out into the two ones. Yeah, this is the thing where I made a mistake. You can double click on that. We're going even deeper. Then you can go into this background, add the blur that I forgot to add, try to match the other one pretty good. And then this little arrow right here will back you out, back you out, and here you are. Now you can just watch through your video and switch the angle of the camera. The background will match, the foreground will match, 